What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? It's your man, Devious Amaya, coming to you on another Devious Friday. Happy New Year to all of the people who are watching. Everybody on Ustream, GS Radio North, all 189 countries of y'all. 220, 231. We up to 231 countries? Get, yo! No! Get oh, my God! Don't you got a bell or a hand clap or something for Yeah. That? Oh, yeah, it's going off on the website, believe okay. me. Yeah. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, all y'all on the website. I know y'all hear the applause. Yeah. So tune in. Y'all need to watch us on the website. This live thing. Yeah. There we go. Um, you know, the past couple of weeks has been kind of in and out, so I apologize for that. We're working on it. But you can still watch us. You stream www.ustream.tv and www.gsradionork.com. Tonight, if you want to call in, the number is 973-900-6453. Call in, chat with us, chat up the scumbag. I know I haven't introduced him yet, but this is the man sitting right here to my right who, I look, I have watched his show progress over the last year and a half. And it's true. You like. Like, tune in like y'all will see me share it on my wall it's an absolutely entertaining two hours like it's serious so can we give it up for my man steve the original scumbag thank you, thank you. yes 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 yes, yes. scumbag uh, steve in the house thank really? you for that introduction oh and and and, and to the fact that my brother here who's mentoring me i am i am growing a platform i watch what you do and i emulate so really? thank so thank oh you, my gosh, my man. That's like thank the you. biggest compliment I have ever had. Let me tell you something. I watch your show. Like, okay, maybe I need to uh, for real. See, see, your show has that content that makes people say I can share this. Mm -hmm. My show has the content that maybe see people. Eh, maybe I might not share this. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. Maybe if he clean up the cussing. But I, I see you do a lot of shows. I see you had a lot of councilmen. You have a lot of real people. And the thing I like about your show and I respect the most, you have a lot of real. People, there's no faking when it comes here. Nah. If you come here faking, you probably throw them out. But everybody you brought here is real. They know what they're talking about. They're intelligent, funny, well versed, and you're a great host, man. Oh, so thank shit, you, man. thank you, thank you. So are you? 200, I appreciate 213 that. 213 countries. Yeah, man. Shit. Listen, um, that that was the biggest, the best New Year's uh, surprise I could ever get right there. Oh, no, oh my God, the last time I did, it was like 189 the last time. So. Wow. 232 countries. 232 I'm, countries. I'm, I'm, we are worldwide. I'm actually in Bloomfield, Newark right now. I'm going to catch up <laughs> one of these days. I, I got two cities conquered. 231 countries. This is my mentor. This is my this is my internet journalistic hero right here. Listen. Everywhere I go, this man wins an award. Everywhere I go. I've been to five different places. I interviewed Howard Hewitt. 
And I had to cut that interview short to interview my brother because he received an award that night. Well, remember we was there? Yes. Union, Union Civic Center, right? Yes. Goddamn right. They yes. brought my man up there, gave him an award, accolades. <laughs> I said, Howard Hewitt, hold up a second. <laughs> I'll be right back. It's devious of my goddamn it. Show some goddamn respect. Right. Howard Hewitt said, I'll be right here. <laughs> Okay, and I put the shine on my brother. I've been knowing you since what, 1980? Yeah, yeah, right yeah, about, okay. right about, right about that time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Did you know then that you person. wanted to do something like this? You understand what happened was honestly, I just like you know we always talk shit since we met. You know, we each other, and that's all I did was you know I met a guy named you know Zay, H Y Real Radio owner. My brother. Okay, Big Zay. You know what I'm saying? Tell that nigga, tell him drink some water. <laughs> Stop eating that fast food and drink. He won't listen to me. Soda pop and fast food. Tell him start that shit out. But I met him through a, a woman named Brandy K. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I came on his broadcast once or twice, and I just added some flavor. Mm -hmm. But I didn't say much because I didn't understand what was happening. But whenever they asked me to talk, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Right. And he was like, I'm going to give you your own show. Nice. And he stu it stuck true to his word. And when he got his platform together, he gave me a platform. Word. And so what I think works best for me is what I just know how to do. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, shoot from the hip, you know, but also, like, I, I see what you're doing, and I understand how I have to grow the audience more. It can't just stay with, you know, PD, sex, 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 vulgar, so vulgar, sex. So once I got past that level, and mm -hmm. I saw, I watch your show, you know, once I got past the vulgar sex level, <laughs> I saw how you do it. You incorporate the vulgarity, the mm -hmm. comedy, the intelligence, and the knowledge, and you stir it up. Mm -hmm. So I just took that formula that I saw you doing, I incorporated it how I think it works best for me and and it's growing. I appreciate it. You know oh my saying? God. So, I'm, I'm just in here like almost speechless. <laughs> like for real, for real. Um, no, Cause I'm, I'm and it's so, and I'm, I'm glad that we both look at each other's, like right. we bounce off of each other to try right. to make ourselves better. Cause that's what it's about. That's right. Trying to make this platform a whole lot bigger and you know, bring quality entertainment and information to right. everybody who's watching us. And, and see, the thing is, people know us. And the thing it is, the thing is with me, when it comes to this, this internet, this, uh, this platforms, I don't have an ego. Mm -hmm. If I, like, like, I trust you enough to come to you. Remember I showed you about, I was, I was going to the cable company. Yeah. And I said, I need your help. Mm -hmm. I need to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Because I knew I could talk to you and you would tell me what I needed to do honestly. And it wouldn't be an ego thing. Mm -mm. And the more education you gave me, the more I was able to call. Cause you, you was the first person to tell me, you said, do what you do. You said, never mind everybody else, do what you do. Exactly. And that's the best you could have told me. You could stay, and you know who I got that information from. Um, one of the, uh, actually you probably see him tonight, a big club elevation, Deron Tariq. He said, and I didn't, and you know how you just go about doing your thing so much so that you don't even realize that people are watching you. Right. I was working with him and um, he was compliment. He was actually talking about the show and he said, all these years, Antoine, I've watched you, you know, since he first met me. He's like, you always stay true to what you do and don't veer off into what anybody else does. Like you do what you want to do. And I find that that works best for me because once this becomes a job, I'm going to quit. Mm. For real. As long as it stay fun and it's, you know, always entertaining and stuff, that's what it is. As soon as it become a job, Joey Mazza, I will quit. Good advice. Word. As soon as it becomes work, quit. And that goes for the women out there. As soon as that relationship become work, it's over. I'm going to quit you. <laughs> Listen, yo, y'all missed the part earlier a few minutes ago. I need you to tell this story again. Because we live right here on GS Radio and Ustream right now. So I need you to tell that story one more time. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> the Wendy story. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Man, yes. See, I got to tell it. Yes. Okay, dig, right? I was in Wendy's, right? I don't even supposed to be eating fast food, but I was, you know, I was hungry. I was on a mission. <laughs> Okay, so me and this, and this this woman in there, you know, and this this uh this huge dude came there, homeless guy, but he was about six two, big healthy homeless guy. I said, God damn, he eating better than me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? About what five eight two thirty? He's got six two two fifty. He first he asked me, yeah. I said, Nah, man, beat it. So he went to her. I'm saying, Miss, I'm hungry. She said, Okay, you know, pick what you want. So he picked what he wanted. I said, You gonna feed this guy? She said, I don't mind feeding anybody if they're hungry. I said, Word. I'll take a number three with uh, a soda. So she snapped on me. Ah, 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 you work. You look like you work. I said, miss, you just said you don't mind feeding anybody if they're hungry. Right. I'm hungry. <laughs> no, no, no. He, he's less fortunate. You look like you work. I said, so you rather feed a man who's begging than a man with a job. I said, shouldn't that be the other way around? You feed the working man mm -hmm. and let the man who ain't working find his own way. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. I don't mind feeding people, but you work. The moral of the story is... Black women like taking care of bums. Boom. 
Don't want to take care of the working man. Boom. She rather take care of the bum. Listen, it's yo. You can't get no deeper than that on any level. You just that's Think about that's, it. that's the bottom line right there. Think about it. It's real talk. If for real, she was gonna feed him because he ain't working, but wouldn't feed me because I'm working. Black women like taking care of bums. Wow. So check yourself. Scumbag like knowledge. You Absolutely. know what I'm talking about. That's what it is. Now, where did you get the name the scumbag? You know what it was? <laughs> I was trying to think of names, and I didn't want to come off. I was thinking like prime minister, the minute prime <laughs> minister, or or the president of Newark, or I didn't want to think of anything too grandiose that I really couldn't live up to. Right, right. I said, you know what, scumbag Steve. <laughs> I said, oh shit, scumbag Steve. And and the thing about it is, what 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 drove me to that, the scumbag chronicles. It was chronicling the life of a scumbag, cause I did some seedy shit, whether you believe it or not. I know y'all don't believe it looking at me. I know you look at me. You know this guy hasn't done. Don't let my looks fool you. I've done some seedy shit. <laughs> so, and being able to regurgitate those stories and tell about the seedy shit I've done, people actually understand. Yeah. Because there's a few people that I've grown up with that have done some seedy shit. Absolutely. So a lot of times when I'm talking about me, I'm talking about you. Mm -hmm. And you can understand the story because. You know, some of my shit is off the deep end. I saved that. But other things is right along, you know, cheating, infidelity, messing mm. around, lying, trying to get out of it, getting jumped, running away, jumping people. It's a lot of things that I've done that I can chronicle that mm. gives me an understanding of a certain level. So when I say scumbag Steve, it's funny, it's catchy. I can live up to being a scumbag any day of the week <laughs> rather than being a prime minister. Right. You know, and they say, hey, scumbag. <laughs> it don't hurt my feelings right because i know who i am and i know what i'm dealing with that's what especially that. when i deal with the public i know exactly who i'm talking to and what i'm dealing with mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people i call myself a scumbag and i'll be thinking man this is very ironic mm. i'm calling myself a scumbag and look who i'm talking to exactly so it works it's funny you know it's a i can, I can make fun of myself you know I, I don't take anything too personally long as it's not on the verge of disrespect mm -hmm. and it's fun you nice. know, and it's fun. And, he, and after a while, I went from being a target to people laughing at me to them laughing with me. Yes. And mm -hmm. that's, that's, the, that's the switch I was able to do by watching what you do. See what I'm saying? I saw how my show was running. They laughing at me first because I'm so funny. Mm -hmm. Now they're laughing with me because, oh, I understand where he's coming from now. Yeah. Yo, that happened to me. Yeah, oh, my yeah, baby yeah. mother did the same thing to me. Oh, yeah. Yo, I did cheat on it and I did lie. Mm -hmm. Now they're laughing with me. Yeah, they can identify. Now they're coming around. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's an understanding. Now that we're building an understanding, that's what helps me grow the platform. Absolutely. Of getting more viewers, more followers. And that's what actually helped me land on your show. You know? <laughs> Which is that a was blessing. that was going that was going to happen regardless. It just took a because when you happen? when you first started, you and I, our show times, we had the same show time. Like my show was an hour, yours was two hours, right. but we would both start at eight o'clock on a Friday, so I couldn't come be on your show, and right. you was doing your show while I was. So it always was that you know we couldn't connect. But now that your show is on Wednesdays, right. I will be up there as soon as I possibly can. You damn right. You come next Wednesday if you want. Let me tell you, family, you come when you get ready. Okay, Stephen, I'm coming. You got it. Word, same it here. I'm gonna tell you something. Even though me and his brother's show was on the same time on the same day. He would share my videos, mm -hmm. and I would share his. Absolutely. Because this isn't a competition. No. There's enough room for him to grow and be great. There's enough room for me to grow and be great. Mm -hmm. There's enough room for me and my brother to be great together. Mm -hmm. There was no competition ever. Mm -mm. I would see his show and share it right before mine go on. Support my brother. Yeah. And share his show. If his show get 300 viewers and mine get 97, I got to set my game up. If his show get 97 and mine get 300, he going to step his up. But I'm mm -hmm. going to share his video. He going to share mine. He's been one of my number one supporters since day one. And he has a show. I know a lot of people not doing what we're doing that won't support what we're doing. Look, we was talking about that last week. We was talking about that last week. Like, you get more love abroad. Mm. You know what I'm saying? From the other countries, the 231, 13 okay. countries. 231 countries. He's syndicated. I'm just saying. Show some um, goddamn respect. <laughs> Show some goddamn respect for real, for real. That that's amazing. But um, we get more love, and like people at home, people at home, just you know, people you actually know and see, wow. don't Preach. support you. And I'm like, Preach. how does that work? Like you see Preach. me at the club. And you smile and we and you yeah I, I see your show did you share it 
Exactly. Did you comment? Did you make? Because that's how you. That's how we will be able to one day monetize right. this situation. Exactly. The more people that we get that like it and share it, the more people who view it, uh, advertisers and people who want to sponsor us because they know that we have a large viewership, they will begin to take notice of us. So if you guys don't do that, how the hell are we gonna? How are we gonna grow? How are we gonna grow? So uh, it's up to we need. Every last one of y'all to right now hit the share button. Right now, everybody right. hit that's the share right. button. That's it. That's right. Even if you don't write a, you know, a, you ain't got to synopsize the 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 video or nothing like that. Just share it. Somebody on your timeline might go, oh, let me look at this, and then they might decide to share it. You know, so that's how that's how it grow. And you know, and, and it's crazy because we share our video. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call Arts High School out right now. Or, oh, Arts listen. High School. I'm calling you <laughs> bastards out right now. <laughs> <laughs> Me and his brother graduated from Arts High School, class of 91. Yep. We was real fly in high school. He was fly to me. Not, but we was not fly in high school. Long shot. Okay? We was real fly in high school. We share our video to the class of 1991 page. And I don't see none of our people from high school sharing that video off of that page. Mm -mm. I'm calling out Arts High School 1991. The What is it? The 1991 page? Uh huh. Me and his brother share our videos, our hard work to the page, to the people in high school that love us. And I hardly see any shares off of that page. That's why I stopped advertising and putting promotions in there. Right. That's why, because that bothers me one that person I don't like see it. it. One yeah. person probably like it. Miltina Frazier. Miltina, Love, yeah, Miltina always likes the video. Bathsheba used to. Bathsheba, that was my, oh my heart. Gosh. Man, God damn, man. Y'all know her heart. as uh, Grandma, Grand, uh, Grandma, Grandma Green. Green. Yeah, yeah Green she was up here. Love, love her to death. She used to always, because she did her own video, so she exactly. understood. She understood. Exactly. And when she she would share the video before I even got on the air. Right. I said, how you do that? But, <laughs> yeah, a couple years, she came right. down here. So 1991, I'm calling y'all out. Once this man posts his video, once I post my video, once KZ, Reality Unscripted, posts his videos. Y'all, we went to high school with y'all. Y'all should be our number one supporters. This should be shared at least 91 times. At least. But we post it on the page, maybe two, three people will look at it. And you know, like I say, supporting me is free. Absolutely, like it don't cost nothing at all. For real, I I don't understand why what what the, I don't understand what the situation. I know is. niggas like free, and supporting me is free. Mm -hmm. Just hit the share button, let it stay on your page for two days, and then you can delete it. But just share it right quick. That's all we have. Like you say, viewership, sponsorship. If they see the views, we could do something bigger. Mm -hmm. But like you said, that I really understand a lot of my support comes from people like I, I got a guy named David Hayes live in Florida mm -hmm. me and him got kicked out of this sophisticated group uh, together for being too real they kicked <laughs> us out and uh, uh, every day David Hayes support my video and I don't, I've never I don't even know what he looked like wow he's been supporting my video from day one mm -hmm. and then there's people who hit me in my inbox oh yeah man um you got a show I was wondering if I could come up there and promote my business I said did you share the video right do you rock with my live mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. sometimes I'm like no you don't because I can see who share it Y'all forgot about that? So it's just, you know, what we're going to do. But, I, but what I think is the best strategy for that, we're going to concentrate on who support us. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. soon it's going to be cool to support us. It's going to be in vogue to support us. Absolutely. Right now, and eh, eh. mm -hmm. But when it becomes cool to support us, like if they support Kevin Hart and Jay-Z, it's going to be cool to support us one day. And by then, we ain't going to need that support. We're going to be somewhere else. We're going to be somewhere else. You heard it here first because the grind is going. Right. It, this is 20, this is a whole nother year. We about to do some some new things, but um, now and and this is the one thing because after co after I graduated college, you know, you come back to the city that you live in, you run into the people you know that you went to high school with. Sometimes you don't get a chance to catch up. But the one thing that surprised me the most <laughs> about this man right here was his day job. <laughs> <laughs> I went now it's different because you got you you moved into a different arena <laughs> recently yeah but he works in education <laughs> and I I'm sitting there looking like I thought maybe you like owned a gym or something I just yeah. I didn't and see you as a, a teacher yeah, school teacher yes get the shit out of little kids I know they don't play they play they play no games with me at all they play no games <laughs> like they don't, see they don't know if I'm going to kick them in the ass or not and right I keep, and I like to keep that 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 fear on them like the kids who are well behaved mm -hmm. I scare the shit out of them the most to keep them well behaved yeah and then the ones who don't know how to act he say damn he jumped all over her and she wanted to put kids mm -hmm. imagine what he'll do to me so I, I use pull them right together oh, yeah, pull them right together mm -hmm. and the ones who don't know how to act I, I, I get real close to them and I threaten them I say listen <laughs> 
I'm gonna say it, y'all can hear it, but I'm quiet in his ear. If you don't do what I tell you to do, I'm gonna take you in that closet. I'm gonna wrap your shirt around your neck. Do you understand? Me? I said page twelve, and then when I pull back, <laughs> no problems. Oh, wow. See, it's not the loud threat that get them. Mm -hmm. It's that up, pers up, up close and personal threat where they can feel the heat of your breath and they can they can feel the tremble of the table when I shake it. And then when I step back and give them that look, I have no problems. <laughs> Mr. McCaster, yes. <laughs> Yes, nothing. I thought so. And, and, and once the classroom fall in line, mm -hmm. the children run the class. I just facilitate. I just add the seasoning and wow. stir it up, and I let the kids go for theirs. Like I tell them, you're going to do it the easy way or the hard way, but you're going to do it. Wow. You're going to do it. You're going to do it the easy way? You're going to do it the hard way, but you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And they say, all right, I'm going to do it the easy way, man. Go, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go sit down. And I act like I'm doing something. I'm just scribbling on a book. I ain't really doing nothing. They look like they, they look to them like I'm busy, and I'm doing graffiti, drawing Run DMC and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm over there playing on my phone, and they think I'm doing something important. Long as they long as they're afraid, I can do what I want to do. So you know the formula now. How you deal with kids? A lot of love mm -hmm. and a little fear. That's right. That's how you do. That's right. And it's not that loud screaming threat. Mm -hmm. It's that quiet, up close and tight threat mm -hmm. that really make them go. You know what? Let me let me chill. All that, ah, blah, blah, blah. They're going to get used to you yelling after a while. Exactly. That yelling don't mean no. All you're going to do is yell. Mm -hmm. But when you get up close and you tremble at desk while you're talking and you slide back, <laughs> they'll do whatever you tell them to do. And then all the kids is looking like. Exactly. So Wide eyed, like, like exactly. oh my God, I hope you don't come to me next. Bingo. <laughs> what made I, you want to. And then I go back to my desk and start scribbling. Scribbling again. <laughs> They think I'm doing something important. I'm over there like, hmm, all right. I'm drawing sneakers and you know saying t-shirts and writing topics for my talk show. And they think I'm busy. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just that look. But I love the kids. The kids respect me. As long as they respect me and know what time it is, we have a great year. What, what made you want to be a teacher? Actually, you remember Shakur Ishmael? Of course. I just saw she, her last week. Shakur she looking good, too. Absolutely. She See, still like she point, did in high school. Yeah, it was a point me and Shakur was dating each other. You know what I'm saying? Me and Shakur was hot and heavy. I was first. We was best friends. Right. That was my nigga. Mm -hmm. Then somehow, you know, she tricked me. Yeah, she tricked me into dating her. She tricked me. Okay. Uh, I don't know, know the sleazy story, but she tricked me. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? She tricked me. One night it got sleazy. Cause me and her used to hang out all the time. Mm -hmm. You know. So one night, you know what I mean? I went over to her house. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to go sleep. She like, no, no, that fucking is sleepy. So I woke up and it was on. I was like, oh shit. I said, okay, this is how you want to do it, okay. <laughs> she tricked me. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? All right, fuck it. So I was working at Ikea. I had graduated college. I was working at Ikea, and I was, you know, slinging a little bit of hood. You of know course. what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I'm getting money, and they, the cops don't really see me much because when they see me, I got on checkered pants and a white shirt, and I smell like onions. Mm -hmm. So they don't think I'm getting it. Right out here, they don't think I'm getting it. I'm getting a little cheddar there. Mm -hmm. So Ishmael was like, um, why don't you take the NTE? I said, what is that? She said, national teacher exam. I said, hmm. I said for what? She said, you get a job as a teacher and stop working at Ikea. She said, you know, you got a college degree. You working at Ikea? I said, all right. So she, she hooked up the test. She paid. She, I think she sent the money over there for me. I went to Barringer. I took the test and aced it. So when I passed the test, I took that little test grade, mm -hmm. and I went to Passaic. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, you know, I passed the teacher's exam. What's up with a the job? They said, what do you do? I said, I'm a teacher. <laughs> they said, how long you been teaching? I said, oh, about five, six years. <laughs> so I made, up, I made up some schools and everything and put on my resume. Wow. You know? So they hired me. <laughs> so I was in Passaic teaching preschool. So I'm in there with these kids like, this is really happening. I was like, oh, shit, this is happening. So I had to find out from Ishmael how to write lesson plans and all of that. So I would look through her stuff when she go to sleep because she teach music. Okay. So she go to sleep. I'm in her books like, okay, objective. Uh, what is what does that mean? So, so I'm just <laughs> memorizing everything. So I start writing lesson plans, and then from there, I got a job in East Orange teaching second grade. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I could do this. And I just start reading how to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Wow. So I figured, be the kind of teacher that I always wanted. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, so I went back the next day. I was fun, I was happy, I was educational. I was on the ass and the kids respected the structure. And then they sent me back to school to take teacher classes. They must have felt this nigga would eat. <laughs> so 
So they took, they sent me back to school. Then I said, oh, this is what we supposed to be doing. Wow. So I learned all of that shit, applied it in the classroom, and it been, shit, it been, what, 20 years now. Wow. It's been 20 years I've been in the classroom rocking and rolling. So, it's, 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 and it's been 20 years that quick. Yeah, because it's all the blink of an eye. It started in 97, 98, you know what I'm saying? Wow. It's been 20 years. That's what's up. It's because of Shakora Ishmael that I'm actually in education. Shout out to Shakora. I got to yeah, find her. We got to go man. party we for rocking, real. We was rocking hard till you know, shit came between us. You know it's saying? always so, something. I mean, yeah. A punk ass family, but I ain't going to say that. <laughs> Shout out to Shakur Rishmo's punk ass family But I ain't gonna put it out there Cause then I'll sound bitter <laughs> And we both know I'm not bitter right <laughs> Right <laughs> God damn it I'm over it Allegedly Allegedly. I don't wanna sound bitter At all No you, you no know bitterness I don't Thank see, you Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't feel bitter <laughs> <laughs> Even though she looking really good lately Oh my god I'm not bitter Amazing. What? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. She looks the same Doesn't as she, she did in high school. Yeah, she looks amazing. She was always it's a crazy. beautiful person. Yeah, absolutely. Her, Keisha, Keisha Chavis now, uh, and Ebony. Mm-hmm. All those are three that I see. And uh, Yakini. Yeah. I just saw her. I tried a few to push up ago. on Yakini. She didn't want to date me. Why, pray tell? I don't know. <laughs> Yakini, maybe you can answer. Does it have anything to do? I'm snitching. With the scumbag situation, could it be that? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but Yakini, if you're listening, we want to know. Why wouldn't you give me some? It went from dating to give me some. Did y'all see it or was it just me? Well, I'm not trying to talk to her because I don't want some. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you know. I like Yakini. She's a beautiful person, beautiful yeah, person. And her son is going to be a championship NBA baller and a scholar. So she's yeah. doing a fantastic job. Yeah, he's nice. A, he's a very good player. He plays for Weekway High School, I believe. I'm not sure she'll correct it later, but okay. she's doing a great job as a parent. So That's I, what's up. Salute to Yakini. Nice, nice, nice. Now, mm-hmm. wait, and, and you prefer teaching the smaller kids rather than? Yeah, I'm going to tell you, little kids, little problems, big kids, big problems. Wow. You know, so that's always, you got to always remember that. Little kids, little problems. Big kids, big problems. I taught eighth grade once, and eighth grade was more so, um, right here, Louis Spencer, down Prince Street. Mm-hmm. What, uh, what's that? That's, yeah, Prince Street and, uh, what's the, Muhammad Ali, I think, the cross street is. Mm-hmm. And um, what it is with those eighth graders is more of socialization skills. Mm-hmm. You're not really teaching anything for us. You're teaching history and more so socialization, how to talk to people, how to carry yourself. Young boys, how to clean yourself properly mm-hmm. so you don't always smell, you know, how young boys can smell. Mm-hmm. And then the young ladies is listen, you carry yourself this way, don't let him talk to you like that. Stop bending over a certain kind of way. Mm-hmm. You're promoting a certain image and you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So it's more so of giving them a life skill to go to high school to build upon, more so than math, science, and social studies. The thing in the eighth grade I taught basically was math because that's 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 an infin- infinite mm-hmm. i taught history because it was bullshit and they're lying to you mm-hmm. and i taught a lot of science because it was fun and okay. grammar how yeah. to speak how to write a proper sentence right that's more so what it, what the eighth grade curriculum was in my class they had a whole bunch of bullshit mm-hmm. but i cut the I, I i put what they wanted to see in the lesson plan but i did my own thing that's what's up. i know what these black kids need because i know what i needed Mm-hmm. I told them the truth. I kept it real with them, and they went on to ninth grade high school. One of my kids, Michael, he graduated with a master's degree. Nice. Wow. So yes, yeah, it's, it's, it gets deep. Yeah. It's very rewarding. Not a, not initially, mm-hmm. but as years down the line, you know, like I had a student mine named Saudia Saudia Chestnut, but I, I forgot what her name is on Facebook. And there was a post she tagged me, and it said, "Well, who? What year did you have your first black teacher?" And she was like, "Stephen McCaster was my first black teacher." And because of him, my vocabulary is impeccable. I said, oh, shit. I what? screenshotted in my phone. I didn't even respond. I just screenshot the whole thing. I got it in my phone. You know what I'm saying? I said, it's impeccable. <laughs> my vocabulary is impeccable. Yes. Your immediate response is, oh, shit. Yeah, my, <laughs> oh, shit. So I screenshotted it and saved it. I didn't even respond to her. Because I knew who she is. That's my, that was one of my second graders. Nice. Yeah, so it's rewarding later on, more so than initially. Initially, as school teachers, we take a lot of shit. Oh yeah, they heap a lot of shit on us. But mm. just like with, with your with your career, mm. oh they heap God. a lot of shit on us, and it's always our fault. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's it's rewarding initially after you get through and learn how to navigate the bullshit. Yeah, give the them politics. what they want to see when they come in. Show them the dog and pony show. Mm-hmm. Action. 
how are you today, children? And right. Give them all of that bullshit that they want to see. Right. They'll say good bullshit, mm -hmm. and they'll leave, and then you shut the door and say, listen, if you don't put that away, I'm going to break your neck. Mm -hmm. You know what time it is. Math, let's go. Mm -hmm. I gave the principal what they needed to see. Now I'm giving these children the education they need to have. Exactly. And it has to be real, man. Yeah. Just what, like on the microphone with me and you, it has to be real. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what's oh. the... Because a lot of people even... A lot of people in our community are having problems with their kids and mm. kids, you know, that's one of the main things that mm. this is the main topic of concern in a lot of yeah. areas, you know, yeah. with the kids. What do you think it is that parents can do when it comes to coordinating with the schools mm. in order to help the kids? I'm going to tell you, this is deep. It takes it takes a, it takes a collaborative effort from the school, to, from the classroom to the home, back to the school. What happened was I, I had it so good with some of my parents. They would use me as leverage in the home. I'm going to tell Mr. McCaster what you did. And it's like, oh, oh, my easy, oh, chill. Wow. One kid, I even showed up at their house sometime when I taught second grade. I said, I'm going to come to your house tonight. You can plan with you. <laughs> and I didn't come. He thought I was playing. Mm -hmm. That Thursday night when I banged on the door, his mother opened the door. I said, uh-huh, what I tell you? And the mother played it off. He said, okay, I'm going to the store. You take care of him. I said, thank you. I said, your mother not here to save you now. Wow. What did I tell you? <laughs> and you and, and look on his face was like, oh, shit. <laughs> And, and he was, and it was, you know, the white shit came in his mouth. I said, I told you I was going to come, didn't I? I took off my coat. I said, get that book out now. And his wow. mother crept back in the house. I winked at her. He did my work. He understood where I was coming from. And it, it takes a collaborative effort where the parent know, what a kid knows, that you can't play the teacher against the parent and the parent against the teacher. Because mm -hmm. I know some, I've seen some situations where a parent will curse the teacher out. Never me. I've, I've never had that issue. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm so anybody different, but I've never had that issue. Mm -hmm. It takes a collaborative effort from teacher to parent. The parent has to understand what the teacher's up against. We have to understand what the parent's up against. And we ha can't let that kid play us against each other. Right. Oh, the teacher said this to me. I remember one time I went, I went to my mother. God bless her soul. I said, Ma, the teacher don't like me. My mother said, she better like your ass tomorrow because if she called my house, I'm kidding your ass. Okay. <laughs> So I went on where I needed to go because I saw the bullshit on TV. Uh -huh. I'm thinking, I say, Mom, the teacher don't like me. Really? Let me go find out what that teacher problem is. Mm -hmm. My mother said, she better like your ass tomorrow because if she called me, I'm kicking your ass. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. I, I, well, that, that's the end of that. You know what I'm saying? So hey, Black children, don't try it. Yeah, that's the, that's the effort because the children are out of control. The parents need help with parenting wow. and the teachers need help teaching. We need each other. Wow. I can't teach the kid and you, you don't know what to do as a parent. I don't know what to do as a teacher. And the kid is just running both of us. Mm -hmm. And we have to let the kids know we're in charge. You're a subordinate. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be subordinate to myself, every other adult, and especially your parents. Mm -hmm. And once the kids understand the dichotomy and the, and the, and the cycle of what needs to happen, mm -hmm. I don't think we have these many problems. And we need more men. We need more men. Wow. A lot of men don't want to say anything to these young guys because they're afraid the young guy going to attack them or shoot them. Mm -hmm. No. When, when I was young, I had older men tell me what time it was. Mm -hmm. I had OGs let me know, hey, you fucking up. Mm -hmm. I had old men let me know, listen, don't don't talk to me and cuss when you see my wife. That's right. That's they would right. check me. When you see my wife, you you stop the cussing. And I'm like, yes, sir. Because mm -hmm. I don't want no problem with this man and I'm a kid. You know, so... We need more men to step up and mentor young men or at least check them or at least have a conversation with them right. or at least pull them to the side and make them aware that I'm a man. You're not a man yet. We can learn from each other and we can help each other mm -hmm. until we have that. I mean, it's, it's going to be rough. But as far as parent, teacher, child liaison, just, just the child understand that you can't play the teacher against the parent. And a lot of children do that. They play the teacher against the parent, the parent against the teacher. And like I said, I've seen some parents come to school. Well, it's your fault because he don't do this at home. You know his little boogie ass do that shit at home. So mm -hmm. don't come in here with that bullshit mm -hmm. like at home he's an angel. And it's, and it's the teacher's fault that he's being disrespectful because he's bored. If his ass is bored, he needs to take out a book and do some writing. You don't get bored and disrupt anybody's classroom. That's right. And so it takes the parent to be a little more stricter, and it takes the teacher and the parent to work together. Like I said, I'll take a trip to a kid's house in a minute. Mm -hmm. It's nothing to me. You know, so, and the parents give me that leeway. Nice. Because it's a respect factor, mm -hmm. both ways. Believe me, I'll come to a kid's house in a minute. Can I tell you? <laughs> 
can't imagine. Yeah, and I'm ready for action. And ain't no smiling, ain't none of that. And you standing there like, yeah. Like, this yeah. motherfucker's in my space. Uh huh. And it's about to go down. And then that's when we had a conversation. And if your mother tell me something I don't like, it's your ass. Yeah. I'm in your much. house now. I don't like mm-hmm. to watch my mouth. I know that's right. Your mother tell me something I don't like, it's your ass. Do you understand me? And when the kids speak to me, they say, yes, Mr. McCaster. Mm-hmm. No, Mr. McCaster. None of that, huh? huh? What? Excuse me? Yes, Mr. McCaster. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And that's the respect level I demand. I know that's right. You know, so I'm not there to play with them. I'm there to understand them, respect them, and more importantly, educate them because it's not a joke out here. It's not. I mean, outside of anything, they need us. They need to be strapped with some kind of knowledge, mm-hmm. and it's my responsibility. And I take it seriously. That's what's up. And I, 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 do you think there are a lot of teachers who just don't have that? when they come into the classroom like uh, are they is it that they're burnt out or they don't get paid enough like there's a is it just the the majority of those issues yeah it's burnt you get i'm gonna tell you something it's not easy to burn me out okay but you do get burnt out paperwork this much paperwork that was due yesterday oh my god they changed curriculums and that some teachers they have great intentions mm-hmm. but they might have a bad relationship with their administrator mm-hmm. so now going to work under this administrator is like you know what i'm just gonna get through the day Mm. And then the kids is an added factor. This one's misbehaving. The administrator might not be supporting the teacher as much. So now the teacher is just trying to make it through the year to get rid of this kid and hopefully transfer under a new administrator. Mm-hmm. And it shows in the effort and it shows in the in the attitude. Sometimes you can burn a teacher out. So it's important to support that teacher because I'm in the trenches with your children, your most valuable resource. And you want to make somebody, you want somebody to care about your most valuable resource. Absolutely. And you want to give them, you want to compensate them. Mm-hmm. If it's not financially, hey, listen, you're doing a great job. Here's a $10 Walmart card. Mm-hmm. This much appreciation goes that much, Absolutely. that far. And a lot of teachers are burnt out. Mm-hmm. Some of them feel like their benefits are taken away. Chris Christie was starting a lot of bullshit with the unions. Right. You know, now we got to pay into our pensions more and into our benefits more. Mm-hmm. But, okay, cool. But at the same time, just support the teachers and what they're doing because mm. they, they do get burned out oh wow but who, say, it's hard to burn me out who was one of the teachers that you've had who you think uh, did a really good job as you were coming through school oh shit I had a teacher I got three I had a teacher in first grade named Miss Bell mm-hmm. I was in Hillside George Washington Leslie Street Miss Bell didn't play no games Miss Bell had an evil eye and Miss Bell told me Stephen I already know how to read you need to learn how to read. Like, she said, no, no, no. And she the one that told me, you're going to do it the easy way or the hard way, but you're going to do it. And she had no problem taking the little piece of your shirt mm-hmm. and twisting it around that finger and making you do this while she was talking to him. <laughs> so Miss Bell made an impact because she's told me, I know how to read already. You need to learn how to read. Mm-hmm. You're going to do it the easy way or the hard way. That's where I got that from. Yes. So Miss Bell is actually who got me into reading. Mm. She used to read stories and I used to be so engrossed into the story. Plus, I didn't have a TV in my room at home. It was like one right. TV in the house. <laughs> and I don't want to watch that bullshit. So I started reading. So I'm in the reading. Miss Bell would give me books and I would read the book in like two days. I read the whole book. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, Miss Bell, you got any more books? She goes, like, Yeah, I read the book. So she'd be like, You bullshit. And I'd write a report and she'd be like, Oh, you did read it. I'm like, Yeah, I got no TV. <laughs> so not having a TV, you become a good reader. Yeah, so Miss Bell. And in second grade, I had a teacher named Miss Gates. Oh, she was sexy. Oh, Miss Gates had a fat ass. <laughs> oh, Miss Gates was sexy. She was tall and long, and, and she used to wear them polyester pants with the control top pantyhose in the back. Miss <laughs> Bell was hot, but Miss Bell taught me how to write in. Inc- I'm not Miss Bell, Miss Gates. Second grade, Miss Gates. <laughs> yeah, you know the polyester <clears throat> pants, you can see the little underwear line under the cheek of the- And I used to be sitting there looking at that cheek, of, like, I don't even know what I would have with it with this right, tall like, lady with that with that ass i used to be sitting there like man i was a second grade pervert peeking at that fat second grade teacher ass and miss gates has taught me how to write cursive wow she taught me how to write in cursive because my penmanship was sloppy as shit mm-hmm. she was like why don't you try she had a little boy she said why don't you try writing in cursive so she said well, come back after school i said after school she said just for that you're coming after school i was like mm. bitch <laughs> So I came back after school, and sure enough, she taught me how to write cursive. Nice. Lowercase capital. I knew how to, and my penmanship came up. Mm-hmm. And I would, now, now I'm reading, 
Miss Bell, because I ain't on TV still, second grade. Right. And I'm writing because of Miss Gates. I'm just writing everything in cursive. And I show it to my grandfather. He's like, yeah, that's pretty good. He didn't give a fuck. That's pretty good. <laughs> and I go back in the room and finish writing. I show my mother. She's like, yeah, nigga. Yeah. I'm just writing and reading and reading and writing. So I would take a page out of the book and write the whole page in cursive. Oh, wow. Now my penmanship is neat, mm -hmm. but my printing is still shitty, but my cursive is good. Okay. So Miss Bell and Miss Gates, and then in seventh grade, I had a teacher named Miss Elliot. I didn't like her. <laughs> I didn't like her at all. <laughs> and what she taught me was whether you like me or not, it's no consequence. Right. You have to learn what I need to teach you. So whether you like me or not, you're going to learn what I need to teach you. So liking me, what does that mean to me? She said, I don't know if I like you. But you're gonna learn what I need to teach you. I know that's right. So right there, I was like, "Oh shit!" And yeah. and, and and the education begun. Wow. Once she, want, want, I don't care if you like me or not. You have to learn what I need to teach you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even sure if I like you. <laughs> but you're gonna learn what I need to teach you. And I, that's when I figured it out. Yeah, I'm just here to learn. What the wow. fuck, do the teacher care if I like her or not? I'm a kid. That's an adult. Like, ass <laughs> kick. So I. I have to fall in line anyway. Mm -hmm. So Miss Bell for the reading, Miss Gates for the writing, and Miss Elliot to help me understand the structure to be done. Mm -hmm. Your emotions has nothing to do with this. At all. I got something to do and I'm gonna do it. So those are the three teachers who really that I can really call up from memory that really made me say, you know what? It was worth it. Wow. Awesome. I hope the rest of one of their kids yeah. or something watches this show. Yeah, the rest of the teachers eh, fuck them. <laughs> but those three, yeah, yeah. Especially in high school, I don't, who was your teacher? I don't know. That's I can't say. Mr. Buffet, you liked him? Just because he was funny, he kept yeah. it interesting, and you yeah, know, yeah, he did keep it interesting. He, I don't, I don't know what that was about. Because he didn't he marry Virginia? He did. Word on the street. You Are you saying? I know they went to the prom together, but I ain't. Hello, what? He was fifty. Wasn't Virginia like 26? Cause she came in later on, you know what I'm saying? But you know, not to gossip. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Wow. They got married. You want something new? So, so Mr. Vafay was pretty, uh, yeah, pretty funny. <laughs> I ain't mad at him, hey. Whatever the case may be. Yeah, but he he was uh he tried to keep it interesting. He knew it was boring shit. Right. So he just you know tried and to Mr. keep Vafay it interesting. Mr. Vafay was kind of cock diesel too. Yeah, yeah, he He's was pretty, a fit guy. Shape, he was, shape. yeah. Now that I think, he yeah, was good shape. I wasn't going to test him on no shit like that. Oh no, I wasn't, I wasn't oh, playing no. with him like that. But I talked shit to him. No. But I wasn't about to mm -hmm. try to what you want to do. No, no. Fuck no. That. And, and <laughs> just so that y'all know, this wasn't Steve in high school. This was Steve in oh. high school. Oh. oh my god, you, I like literally half this size. Yeah, I was, I was half. I was like. Yeah. 155, mm -hmm. like senior year, soaking wet. Yeah, I was, I was just aerodynamic. I when I when you posted the picture of your ID, I think from high school or yeah, something. Yeah, remember? That's what me. I was like, damn. I had a longer neck back then and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had a neck. I said, shit, I had a neck back in 1980, whatever year that was. I had a neck. This yeah, shit ain't got no neck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, half this size. That's what's up, though. Yeah. Uh, a couple of things. I know we 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 run short on time. A couple we of things, though. To um, first, where do you want to go with your show? Where do you see honestly, yourself going with your show? I just want to honestly, what I want to do, I want to grow the platform to the point where I can pull in some celebrities, mm -hmm. get some endorsements, and make a little bit of money. I know that's right. And then once you know, make a little bread, and then you know, just mentor someone under me and pass it to them because I don't want to do it forever, man. Right. You know, I just want to talk a little shit, have some fun, you know, make some money, get some sponsorships, and maybe I could become a producer or have my own station. Mm -hmm. If that's where it goes. If not, I just want to do the best I can and say, man, damn, Steve gave it a good shot. Mm -hmm. That's what was I like to show, you know, something like that. But the, the long term goal is to definitely my viewership up to you, get some Pulitzer surprises like you, <laughs> come, to a, come to the festival in Orange and get some awards like you. You know, go to the show out in Union and get some awards like oh. you. So you see where this is going, ladies and gentlemen. Devious is mod has inspired me. You know what I'm saying? So the new motto is like you. <laughs> Hashtag that. You know, because I'm saying I want to, like I said, I want to, I want to have respect to my peers sort of the way you do. 
You know what I'm saying? I definitely would like that's a long term goal. More so than uh, you know, financial situation. Mm -hmm. The respect of my peers that I really gave it a good shot. Mm -hmm. And they see my effort and they respect it the same way they honor you. I would like to have maybe one honor. Some some say, Man, you did a good job. God damn right. I know get me one of them plaques and do this, hang it on the wall and I could be satisfied with that, but if financially I would like to get one of them 15 second commercials, mm -hmm. where they interrupt my shit for 15 seconds Word. and give me $5,000, hello? Word. But that starts with you supporting us. Share the video, share the video, share the video, share the video, share the content. The more shares, the more views, the more you help us with our long-term goals, the more we can bring you more quality programming. Mm -hmm. This is quality programming right here. You understand? We're taking time out of our lives from our families, mm -hmm. from whatever it is we can do it, just to bring you a quality show that we like to do, mm -hmm. but we want you to appreciate us with your free support by sharing the video, telling your friends about the show, liking it, viewing it. Don't just like it, view it. Let it run for about 5, 10, 15 seconds so I can get the view, so mm -hmm. Devious and I can get the view. Don't just like it. If I got 20 people on my live, I'm supposed to have 20 shares. If I got 500 Facebook friends, I'm supposed to have 500 shares. I mean, let's be realistic. It's free. Hit the share button. Support this black man. Support your man right here. I'm your main man. I do all sorts of wild shit to get a share. Watch this. Come here, sweetheart. Let me talk to you for a second. Watch this. Come on over here. Don't be shy. Come here. Come here. Come over here and sit on my lap. You know what I'm saying? I got women sitting on my lap. I'm trying to get a share. I'm working hard for this. All right, you got to get, get a hard on. Oh you say, I got women. I'm working hard for this. I'm out here risking a hard on to get these shares up. Come on now. Man, you smell good. What's that shit you wearing? You smell good. I like, I like that. Share the video. <laughs> you know? Never done stand up. I don't think I'm funny. What? <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Are you fucking kidding me? I, I'm funny to y'all, but regular people don't think I'm funny. I uh, fuck it. I, I I don't think I'm funny. See, this is easy, but getting them in front of all them people, they might not understand me. <laughs> and somebody throw a tomato on me, it's gonna be a fight. Of course, because I'm gonna have on new clothes. You know what I'm saying you gonna fuck my clothes up, up made us. I fight over shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So. I, I don't think I'm funny. Do not. <laughs> okay. Hit me with a tomato. It's on. I really think you should, though. I, I think you. I, I really think I if you know. just sat down and planned a routine, you would you would really kill him. I think that I believe you're that funny. I believe that, you're that thank entertaining. You. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. What, what we at? Uh, okay. Damn, five minutes to ten already. No. Oh. Five minutes to, to finish. Oh. Gotcha. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is all live. This is on. This is this is live. We, did it. You know what I'm I love it. Um, it's your show, man. You tell me when I need to leave. Hey, what, hold on a second. Okay. What is what is that you're wearing? You you excuse me. You do smell nice. What okay, we're gonna pause while he flirts real quick. I like that. I, you're not even on camera. You gotta blush it. <laughs> like this is the funniest. And she's behind. She got shades on and everything, and you can still see her blushing. Like <laughs> she's all tight. You know. <laughs> Listen, share the, share the video. Share the video. <laughs> right, like in a few minutes. Yeah, I think she. You know what? Don't get yourself together, Mina. Yeah, Mina. Mina, 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 Mina. <laughs> I'm done. One question. Uh, we go. We go reel it back real quick. Okay. Um, what's one of the hardest things you've had to deal with in your profession? Oh man, I'm gonna tell you honestly. Women trying to have sex with me. Really? Yeah. Okay. You would think. Like, I'm all about that. <laughs> Anybody out there listening? <laughs> I'm about that. I see it. I live it. I do it. However, <laughs> however, when I'm at work, you know what I'm saying? I'm not about that shit. Right. I mean, I'm about what I need to do because what's going to happen, what happens is I have situations where 
the women want to have sex with me and I tell them no, mm -hmm. now all of a sudden I'm a shitty teacher. Right. Now they got all these different complaints about me. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, I didn't get a kid homework. Now I put a check when I should have put a happy face. You understand what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. since I said no to having sex, now I'm all sorts of a bad teacher and I got to have meetings with the principal with this woman who offered sex. So that's that's wow. the biggest problem. That's the one of the major problems I've had was women trying to have sex with me. Wow. That is crazy. Yeah. No, see, no, the, see, 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 the parents I'm attracted to, I'm going to have sex with them. The ones I'm not attracted to, they want to give me problems. You know what I'm saying? So it's sex. It's, it's schoolhouse sex. Like, I don't have problems with administrators. I don't have problems doing my job. I don't have a problem with the money because that's all they're going to give me. Right. It's just women coming in wanting to have sex with me. And these women, how dare you think, think I'm just supposed to give it up? I mean, I will. I'll give it up now. Don't get it twisted. But I'm, I'm at my profession, and I tell you, no, I don't want no pumpkin pie. I no thank you. I, I, you know, I even lie and tell women I'm married. And they say, where's your ring? I say, well, I lift weights, and I don't want the weight to fuck up the ring. Mm. Bullshit. You ain't married. Now, Mr. McCaster report to the principal. What happened? Did a, did a parent tell you about the kids' eyeglasses? They make up bullshit. Wow. Because I don't want to have sex with them. That's the time right there. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's her uh, her live feed. Oh, your phone. Okay. Yeah, because I don't want to have sex with them. They make up some shit about me to get me in trouble. Wow. I've had. I'm gonna tell you a serious situation. This one woman want to have sex with me. Right? I told her no. I'm married. She wanted to bring me some. Uh, now I like. I'm gonna be honest. One of my favorite things to eat is uh beans, oxtails, and now beans, turkey. You know, neck bones and rice. I love that shit. You make some great northern beans with some. With some, you know, some smoked neck bones and a plate of rice. Oh, I go nuts on that shit. Nice. So, so she she said that she cooked that for me, and I said no, no, no. I said I can't eat that. I'm I'm married. My wife don't allow me to eat nobody else's food. <laughs> Two days later, her her kid made up a story that I choked her some shit. What? I had a diaphragm case. Yeah, are you serious? Swear to God. Swear to God. It came out later that. I had that the kid said I grabbed her by the neck and picked the kid up and dangled the kid or some shit. Are you serious? I swear to God, I had a diaphragm case. And I told my principal, I said, this lady been trying to sleep with me. I said, she made me smoke neck bones and rice. So the principal was like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, she cones and rice. I said, you know I like that. <laughs> and the principal was like, Miss McCaster, we got to investigate you. This is some bullshit. Wow. I went to the, they call it the rubber room. I couldn't be oh, around. Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard about I that. I couldn't be around kids. I was on Union Avenue with the fucking, the trucks and the, the, the salt with the maintenance niggas. I was in their workshop then. They working with wood and gasoline and shit. I was in there for like a month and a half watching videos and DVDs and shit while they, Dyfus investigated me. And what happened was the kid told the truth. So when the kid told the truth, everybody like, motherfucker, be back. Now you can't chastise the kid. I said, you know, he was like, I said, you know, the suit. Mm -hmm. You know, I was fancy in the, in the attorney. I said, oh, the suit. But I was like, you know what, it's over. It's, but that, it was all because I wouldn't have sex with her. Wow. That's where it stemmed from. I wouldn't have sex. That is crazy. And you know, women women don't take rejection well as you think they do. Mm. They don't take rejection well. They fuck your car up. They get you in trouble. Lie on you. Women don't take rejection as well as men do. Mm -hmm. They don't. They don't take rejection as well as we do. And they, they she, I told her I couldn't have sex with her. And she was trying to get at me for at least a month. She cooked beans, smoked neck bones, and rice. <laughs> and then when she pulled the plate out, I started trembling. <laughs> she knew she had me. You know what I'm saying? I, I had to, I had to get my shit together. I'm sitting there, my knees is clacking and shit, and I'm staring at that plate and dribbling and shit. I said, you know what? No, my wife don't allow me to take food from nobody. <laughs> Two days later, I had a type of case. I should have ate the fucking beans and rice. I should have ate the shit, but. Oh, it took it and threw it away. And stuff. I would eat that shit. Yeah, that shit was going good. You got onions was in this. Oh, man. <laughs> But yeah, man, it's, it's women, you know, women not knowing when to say no. You wow. say no to women and it gets a little hectic in there. Wow. I've told, I've told, I've told not that I'm Harry Bella fine, no shit like that, but um, I've told women no to their advances and, and it, it, it definitely causes tension now. Mm -hmm. They look at you different. They scowl. Fuck him. Mm. He's a good teacher. Fuck him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So women, women don't take rejection that well. Wow. Honestly, they don't. It's weird.
And you think working with you know the type of personality that I have, I like working with women. Mm-hmm. That shit is hell. Oh yeah, it's fucking hell working mm-hmm. with all them goddamn women. Mm-hmm. It's hell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not. It's not fun at all. Mm-mm. You know, it's not fun at all. It's always an issue. It's exactly. always something. It's exactly. No offense to ladies, but because it's not all of you, obviously. But um, I had that same problem working in social exactly. service. It was a whole bunch of women, and it was always fucking something. Even if I'm just sitting at my desk, I used to bring my phone just so I could watch movies. I don't want to be going around like that. It's crazy. I, I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's women. I, and, you know, they, you know, and like I'm at work, you know, now, especially with this Me Too thing happening now. Uh-huh. I'm at work. I'm telling you, I've been, I, I adopted a personality. When I'm at work, I'm like a cyborg. Good morning. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> they come into my classroom, may I help you? Mm-hmm. No, thank you. Wow. I cut the short shit short. You see me in the hall. Good morning. Good morning. I don't tell nobody they look nice. I don't tell nobody I like mm-hmm. the hair. Mm-hmm. I don't compliment mm-hmm. shit. They tell jokes. I don't laugh. I'm t- at work. You, you, if you saw me at work, me and you probably giggling shit because you know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. But you saw me at work. You're like, one woman asked me, do you have fun? I said, no. And walked away. Asked me shit. Wow. Do I, do I have fun? I said, no, I don't. And I walked away. And you know what I ran into at my job is the complete... It's the no, actually, it's not the complete opposite. It's the um, next degree of what you had to deal with because I would run into women who would put their hands on me. Mm. See, yeah. you you because I'm sure you've had it whether yeah. it was at work or not. They, they all sorts of, sorts of, like of oh this. my, it's inappropriate and motherfucker. But if you walk by and squeeze their ass, you would be in jail. What? I had women. I had women flop my titty. Uh huh. Come up to me and flop my titty. Uh-huh. I said, "How dare you?" Oh, it was it was there. I said, please don't touch me. I said, please, I'm not talking to Mike. I said, please don't ever touch me again. Mm -hmm. You're serious. I said, I'm dead Dead serious. Don't don't ever touch me again. Mm -hmm. And I'll walk away. Now I'm a conceited asshole, prick, son of a bitch. No, Mm -hmm. because if I flop your titty. Right, it'll be a whole different situation. Your husband's up here ready to fight. Mm -hmm. But you come up to me and flop and flick my titty. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what's the matter with you? Right. Like, that's not supposed to offend me. No. It You're really, supposed to it, like it. It didn't offend me, but I had to put that air on. <coughs> because you, know, you so were at work. Professional. Don't touch me. Mm-hmm. And that's letting the rest of them know that I don't play that shit. That's right. So I barked on her like, don't touch me again. Mm-hmm. Ever touch me again. Mm-hmm. Well, no. Don't you ever touch me again. You heard what I said. Mm-hmm. Everybody's all, you know, striking curious poses and shit. Because, you know, the big black guy's freaking the fuck out on somebody. And I made sure I said it loud. You know what I'm saying? Don't ever touch me again. And I said it loud enough. You know, <laughs> so, so they want to see what the fuck going on. You know, he strike them curious poses. I, swear, <laughs> I, I can I could never have worked with you. I'm t- they you can't you be, be in the same building. You be fucking up. You know what I'm saying? Listen, they would be taking me out on the stretcher. Because I was fine. At least yeah. three days a week. Because I would seek I'm you out. Yeah, I would. I would seek you out purposely. <laughs> Y'all seen Mr. Uh, Mr. Boyd? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is now. Nah. And we go somewhere and fuck up, and then when I come out your room, it's you know what I'm saying. Oh my God! You know what's what's really funny? I took the praxis, okay, and I passed it, and I got a raise at work. So I was like, "Fuck that shit, man!" I'm, like, I'm not teaching nobody. Fuck that, like the politics. I, I had too many friends that are teachers, and I hear about the politics. And when we were coming through school. Our teachers had so much leeway to teach us things that were interesting and teach us things that were engaging. Mm -hmm. And I appreciated that it wasn't by the book because every kid doesn't learn well like that. You can't be a regimented situation for me and have me learn. You got to be outside the box this day and then do some of this and tell me some of that. And yet, you know, you got to you have to mix it up. And I believe with a lot of kids, that's the way that they lose attention. And the classroom is the teachers are just uh, trying to do their job basically by the book and you know do all of these things that they're being made to do and they're not really educating the kids they just throwing information at them the entire day and the kids don't they actually want to learn but they ain't learning shit you know what i mean so yeah i i, I had to really think about whether i could because i'm too creative a person and i'm not saying that in a conceited way i'm just saying that's how i like to create other than being a you know stickler for the rules and the regulations i, I don't operate well like that so I had to make that decision. I can't be in that environment. But see, you, you brought up Mr. Vafe. Now, I remember my, Mr. Vafe made a potato gun. You remember he did that shit? Mm-hmm. And he actually pushed the, 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 the tube 
been to that shit said bow mm -hmm. and he said if this was to hit you in the chest at 25 miles an hour he said it could kill you or hurt you yeah it was an actual gun mm -hmm. made out of potatoes and some tubes and shit so and i remember that from 100 years ago yeah so you write it you have to be engaging because you write some kids don't learn by script no no all of these different disorders they they you know, saying these kids have, it's not that. It's that the teacher is boring a lot of the times boring and the kid shit. is acting up because he's tired of being there because he's not learning anything. Yep. That's what most of it is. So be careful. And like you said earlier, when you have a teacher or a situation with your kids, go engage the teacher so that the teacher, that so that the kid isn't playing the parent against the teacher or the teacher against the parent. And you can make sure that your kid is coming home with the education that you're sending them out there to get every morning. Because right. it don't make no sense to send them to a babysitter for six to eight hours exactly. you know what i mean it's it's not could i have i went to college with people who couldn't write a sentence who mm. couldn't not a correct sentence anyway you know they didn't they didn't learn well they just didn't there's capital letters in the middle of the sentence for no reason and periods and run sentences a whole page with no period like it was crazy i'm like how did you learn but people just pushed them they just pushed them through it's damn shame. you know all of this standardized testing testing if you if you ask a fish to climb a tree and it can't climb the tree, it's going to spend its life thinking that it's stupid or inept because that's not what fish do. You know, and the people don't get that really, really simple concept. Every kid, every kid, every kid does not learn the way the kid next to him do, does. And you have to find a way to bring all of the kids into the fold. You have to engage them. You really, really do. And I think that's a big problem in the schools. And I'm going to say this too. A lot of these athletes that get paid millions of dollars, I, I, I hate that they, I hate it. I think teachers should be paid millions of dollars. Because, mm. like you said earlier, it's your most valuable asset. They have your most valuable asset for most of the day, for more hours than many of you spend with your kids awake. Preach. You know what I'm saying? So, why would you not pay more money into that? Into that? You're not putting the money just into the teacher's pockets. You're putting that money into your kids. A lot of these teachers got to go out and buy things for their kids. Church. Y'all really need to um, be engaged and involved. Like you were saying earlier, the men need to step up and start speaking to the young brothers. You got to. You got to. Any of my nephews tell you, I will cave your chest in. It, we don't play those types of games. You're a young black man. There is no room for error. So we have to get our shit together is the bottom line. Right. Anything you want to uh, leave, you want to leave the people with tonight? <laughs> I feel like I've given, given so much. <laughs> you really have. <laughs> oh, like, my God. But like D.B. Samar said, uh, this is your only shot. You can't put a quarter in and get three more men. Right. This is your one shot. And as uh, my brother D.B. Samar, my, you know, my podcast mentor here. As he said, we need to step it up. There's no room for error. One chance only. Mm -hmm. Make it the best chance you get. Education. Give a good effort. Show some support. And love somebody. That's coming from the scumbag. I love you all. That's what's up. That's what's up. Much love and respect to the... Uh, to, tell, we can get show. Tell them oh, what. Scumbag Chronicles Volume 2 Reloaded. Thanks to Riz Biz, the new councilman in Newark for the name. Yes, sir. Scumbag Chronicles Volume 2 Reloaded. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. 8 Squad Rebel Radio. Give me a friend request at Stephen McCaster because I go live from my page mm -hmm. and I share it from my page. But I have to promote the station. I don't, you know, cross it's okay. Mm -hmm. www8 Squad Rebel Radio owned by Big Zay and uh, Big Zay mm -hmm. and uh, Andre Face McCray, two owners of the station. They gave me a platform. I appreciate them brothers. I salute them brothers. I salute my podcast mentor, Devious Ahmad. Thank you for letting me come on your show. Pleasure is mine. Thank you very much. And like I say, check me out Wednesday, 8 p.m. I talk shit for two hours, but we learn something and we have fun. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm, I'm telling you, it'll be the best two hours you ever spend on a Wednesday night. <laughs> and then you could come to Cielo <laughs> on Little West 12th Street in New York. Uh, come here. Uh, Kevin Hedge and Louis Vega play anytime on a Wednesday. Uh, shout out to everybody on Ustream. Shout out to everybody on GS Radio. Much love and appreciation to everybody in all of our 231 countries. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. We thank you for watching. Don't be afraid to hit us up and box us or you can call when the show is on. It does, you know, come on. You can, uh, this is for you guys too. So uh, check us out anytime right here. Uh, share the page, share the video, share the share, share shit. 
Yeah, you got to do that. Uh, we about to get out of here. I thank you guys for uh, staying with us for all this time. Apologies again for the late start, but uh, I, as you can see, it was well worth it. <laughs> it was really well worth it. So much love and appreciation to each of you. Once again, thank you to my guest, the original scumbag, Mr. Stephen McCaster. And we are out of here. Peace. Yes, sir.
Thank you. 